Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. I made a decision a long time ago that prayer is one of the central themes of the Christian's life. It's a great privilege. It's not some kind of an obligation. It's a privilege to go to the creator of the universe who has all power and can do all things and ask him in Jesus' name to do things for us and other people and our nations and our governments and so on and so forth. But we're talking about seven hindrances to prayer. If we're going to be committed to prayer, then we might as well do everything we can to make sure they get answered. How many of you can say amen to that? Amen. I'm not big on wasting my time. If I'm going to do something, I want to know that it's going to be fruitful. So I'm committed to prayer. I spent quite a bit of time in prayer this morning. Prayed for all of our partners. Prayed for the meetings. Prayed for myself. Prayed for my husband. Prayed for my kids. Prayed for our co-labors in Christ. Prayed and prayed and prayed. Well, I want to know that my prayers are going to work. Not praying is the first obstacle. You can't get a prayer answered, you don't pray. Second obstacle is hidden sin. Keeping things hidden, you think, in your life. Thinking God doesn't know about it, but God knows about everything. And the whole point of confession is for our benefit. He wants us to bring it up, bring it out, deal with it, get it over with. Because to be honest, anytime that there's hidden sin, there is uh, an oppression there or a guilty conscience. You're not free. And it's very important when we come to God to ask for anything that we come boldly. Amen? Boldly doesn't necessarily mean loud, but it means you're coming with confident boldness. I love Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. It says, we have a high priest who understands our weaknesses. He's been tempted in every point, just like we have, yet he's never sinned. I love the fact that Jesus understands my mess-ups. I love that. And then verse 16 says, therefore, because he does understand, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace, even though we're not perfect in everything. Let us remember who we are in Christ. Let us receive the forgiveness that God offers, and then let us come boldly to the throne so we can get our needs met in plenty of time by asking God to help us. Don't you think it's amazing that you can mess up, get forgiveness, and still go boldly to the throne of God's grace and get the help that you need? I don't know where you're going to get a deal like that anywhere. And he forgets our sins. He removes them as far as the east is from the west. The third hindrance that we want to talk about today is doubt. Doubt. Are any of you ever plagued with doubt? Only 25%. The rest of you have perfect faith. Come on, you ain't that tired. I get plagued with doubt. I'll pray about something or make some kind of a decision and... And then in my mind, I'll hear. Well, see, thank God by now I know that everything that comes in my head is not my thought. Many of it is just Satan trying to use my mind as a garbage dump. <laughs> so just because you have a doubt in your mind, that doesn't really mean that you doubt in your heart. But if you just listen to what's in your mind and don't pay attention to what's in your heart, then you're going to get deceived and Satan is going to steal your answer. I can pretty much tell you that when you ask God for anything or you step out to do anything that's going to be progress in your life, that Satan is going to come and try to plant little seeds of doubt. This ain't going to happen. Who do you think you are? Well, look at how long it's been. After the things that you've done, well, it's just not going to happen. That's all. It's just not going to happen. Well, I have found a real key for me, and I hope it'll be a blessing to you. And just really in the last maybe three or four months, this has become real prevalent for me. And I've, I was teaching this in Africa when I was there recently. And I just think that every once in a while, God gives me a real powerful little thought that becomes a principle and it kind of has worked into the core of my teaching. Like, you know, one of the things I've said a lot is I'm not where I need to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. I'm okay and I'm on my way. How many of you have heard that if you've heard me teach very much? Okay. And so 
another thing that I say a lot is if you do what you can do, then God will do what you cannot do. Little statements that say a lot. So I found one of those little keys when doubt comes against me, and I'm going to share that with you here in the next few minutes. But first, we're going to look at a couple of scriptures. James 1, 5 through 8. I'm so glad you're here today. And I'm so glad I'm here. Okay, if any of you is deficient in wisdom, if th that means if you got a situation and you just don't know what to do. We have anybody there right now? If any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone, not just someone, who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding. And it will be given. It will be given. Not might be, could be. It will be given him. My gosh, if we really read the Bible and take the time to look at it word by word and meditate on it, don't read the Bible for quantity. Read it for quality. It's not about how much you read. It's how much are you getting out of what you read. This verse says something amazing. If you don't know what to do, ask God, and He will help you. He won't find fault with you. He won't do it with a grudging attitude because maybe you haven't been everything that you should have been in the past. Ask, and God will help you. Let's put it back up. Verse 6. Only it must be in faith that he asks with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. That means we've got to make our mind up what we believe and stand on it. Not be changing our mind and be indecisive. Well, one minute I think I, want, I believe, and the next minute I think I don't. And, you know, well, I believe that this is what I want God to do. Well, no, I don't know if I think God can do that. For the one who wavers, hesitates, and doubts is like a billowing surge out at sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. For truly let not such a person imagine he will receive anything he asks for from the Lord. Why? Because that doubt becomes a road closed. I've prayed in faith and I've sent my prayer out. And now even if God sends an answer, it's not going to get in because the road is closed. You say, well, tell me, tell me, tell me quick. What's the answer? I will in a minute, but I want you to be hungry for it. <laughs> Mark 11, 23. And it's so simple, it's scary. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. Be a great opportunity to do a four-part series on the mouth, but we can't do that today. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, and you will get it. Now, see, when we pray for something, we don't get it immediately, do we? He says, you pray, and you believe, and you will get it. But the waiting time is what gets us in trouble, isn't it? If we prayed and immediately had a result, then nobody would have any problem. But when you pray and you have to wait a week, a month, three months, six months, a year, two years, <laughs> three years, four, five, six, man, it gives the devil time to mess with your mind. Amen? So, I have discovered that all we really need to do when the devil tries to lie to us, is just say something back to him. Learn how to talk back to the devil. Huh? Well, first, <laughs> that's the way you all look. First of all, you got to realize that every thought that comes in your head is not yours. So don't take it like it's yours and meditate on it and make it yours. If somebody offered you poison, you wouldn't take it just because somebody offered it to you. 
And Satan offers to poison our lives, no telling how many times a day, by putting wrong thoughts in our mind. But the Bible says you can cast down the wrong ones and keep the good ones. We have a mind of the flesh and a mind of the spirit. And your thoughts should be your thoughts. And you don't have to think something. If you don't want to, you can choose your thoughts carefully. You can throw some out and keep others. Well, that sounds like a lot of hard work, Joyce. It is. Let me tell you something. You are not going to be a lazy Christian and be victorious. That's why I said last night that being a Christian is not for wimps. It's a full-time job. Amen? Now, you can go to church every week and go home, be miserable all week, and go back to church, and go home, be miserable all week, and go back to church, and you can do that for 50 years. And you may go to heaven because you really believe in Jesus, but you will never have any joy here. You will never have any victory, and nobody will ever look at you and want what you got. So for Jesus' sake, it's time that we take hold and realize that the Bible says that we are God's representatives in the earth. God's representatives in the earth. The Bible says that God is making his appeal to the world through us. What kind of life are you living? Are you salt and light? Does anybody want what you've got? <laughs> I'll just leave you with that thought. We don't have to just listen to everything that falls in our head. So, we need to learn how to talk back to the devil. And I've discovered a wonderful thing. All I say now is, I believe that God is working. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care what I see, what I don't see. I don't care how long it's been. I believe that God is working. And you know, that's true. When we see a result, it's the result of what God has done while he was working when we did not see him. And so right now, while you're here in this conference, if you have believed God and you're not getting into doubt, God is working. He's working on your kids you prayed for. He's working on your spouse you prayed for. He's working on you that you've, you've asked him to work in you. And then the devil says, well, you ain't changing. You act worse now than you ever did. You say, God is working in me. I don't care what it looks like. God is working in me. And that's how you stay in faith. You don't just sit around and go, It's just so hard. Faith is so hard. I mean, I pray and I try to believe God, but then I just have all these doubts and it's just, I mean, all we're doing is just agreeing with the devil. Come on, let's make our words count. Say it out loud. I believe that God is working and I don't care. I don't care if you have to say it 200 times every day, make a decision that you are going to act like a warrior more than a conqueror, and you are not going to lay down anymore and just take whatever the devil puts out. The Bible says, if you ask in my name, you will receive. Now, when we're praying things that concern other people, sometimes I think those take the longest because God will not override somebody else's will and make them do something just because we'd like them to. But I tell you one thing, he will bug the living daylights out of them. <laughs> and I think sometimes that we just need to even pray about how to pray for somebody. Don't just start praying for somebody according to your will. Like for example, let, I mean, let, I don't know, let, let's just say that you know somebody that's excessively overweight and you know it really bugs them and you, you'd want to help them. So, you know, we can go around and say, oh God, help them lose weight. Help them lose weight. Like it's just going to kind of fall off of them. <laughs> but, but the thing is, is they will lose the weight when they have a strong enough desire to do whatever is required to do it. So now I pray that God will give people a strong enough desire and a will to do what's right and to not give up when it gets hard. We have to just stop asking God to do everything for us and realize that he gives us the strength to do the doing. Did you hear me? 
God gives us the strength to do the doing. So we don't want to just pray, oh God, get me out of debt. God, I've lived like a maniac financially, now get me out of debt. No, we say, God, when I have to go to the store and I'm going to stay out of there if I don't have to go because I've already proven that I don't do very good when I go shopping. But when I have to go, God, help me, help me, help me, help me not to be buying stuff that I can't afford to buy. Help me. Not just, oh, God, get me out of debt. Oh, God, make me lose weight. <laughs> and then no matter what it looks like, like, you know, there are people that I love that, I mean, you know, I've got four kids and 10 grandkids, and so certainly out of all that, there's people that have needs in their life, and I pray different things for my children and my grandchildren on a regular basis. And some of them, it seems like I pray and they happen real quick. And then others, it just seems like, well, is this ever going to, is anything ever going to change? But every time that thought comes to my mind, this is never going to change, I say, I believe God is working. And I name the person. I believe that God is working. Let me tell you something. I think that just gets Father God like, yeah. <laughs> They're still believing. Yeah. Say, I believe God is working. I believe God is working. Can you already just get a little hint of how that's going to help you to not just cave in and think, well, this is never going to work. Nothing's ever going to work. I believe that God is working. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4. Look first at verse 8. We are hedged in and pressed on every side, troubled and oppressed in every way, but we're not cramped or crushed. We suffer embarrassments, we're perplexed and unable to find a way out, but we're not driven to despair. We're pursued, persecuted, and hard driven, but not deserted to stand alone. We are struck down to the ground, but we're never struck out and destroyed. I would say that they had a whole bunch of problems, wouldn't you? But look at verse 13. Yet we have the same spirit of faith as he who wrote, I have believed and therefore have I spoken. We too believe and therefore we speak. Ooh, I love it. I wonder what they were saying. Well, I doubt that God's going to come through. I don't know if we're ever going to make it out of this one. This is probably going to be the end of us. We've had a lot of trials, but I'll tell you, this is probably going to put us over. No, I believe that even at times when Paul was in jail, he was saying, I believe that God is working. I believe that God is working. I believe that God is working. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. And even if it takes a long time. And see, when you, when you believe that God is working, joy comes through believing. You get your joy back when you believe. We lose our joy when we get all negative and critical and down in the dumps and we're looking at everything in a sour way. But you help yourself when you say, I believe that God is working. Now, if you happen to be someone who doesn't know the power of speaking God's word out loud, I don't have the time to stand here this morning and tell you all of that wonderful thing. But it is one of the most wonderful things that you must learn how to do. Your mouth speaking the word of God is the greatest weapon that you have against the devil. Don't let the devil use your mouth. You use your mouth against the devil. Amen? The Bible says that angels hearken to the Word of God. They don't listen to our complaining. They don't listen to our murmuring and our grumbling. They don't listen to all of our talk about how we can't hold on one more week if God doesn't come through. They hearken to the Word of God. And I believe every time that we say, I believe that God is working, right now God is working in my life. All day long God is working in my life. And I will see the results of what God is doing. Because you see, God works in secret and then He brings things out in the open. Faith goes into the spiritual realm and brings out those things that are already there where they can be seen.
What does it say in Matthew 11? If you believe, you will get it. It doesn't say when you'll get it, but it says you will get it. Everybody say, I believe that God is working. I believe that God is working. So we have to be very careful about doubt. And I've had problems with doubt. I know we all go through problems, but I really believe, at least for me, and I hope that this ministers to you, that I have found a key, a spiritual secret that is going to help me battle doubt and yet it be very, very simple. Every time that doubt comes to my mind about anything that I've been praying about and asking God to do and the devil tries to make me think I might as well give up, it's not going to happen. I'm just simply going to say out loud, I believe that God is working in that situation. Can we say it one more time? I believe that God is working. I believe that God is working in Johnny. I believe that God is working in Mary. I believe that God is working in my finances. I believe that God is working in my body. He's healing me right now. I believe that God is working. He's helping me to get over my past. I believe that God is working. Amen? You say it enough, the devil will leave you alone and go bother somebody that will listen to him. <laughs> I think it's important for us to realize that this great privilege that God has given us to ask anything in his name. Well, I mean, that's just, that's astounding. It's like, if we would just take a day and think about that, it's just like, what a privilege. So surely, we want to make sure that these other things are in order so we can get those answers that God wants to give us. Selfishness. God doesn't answer selfish, self-centered prayers that are prayed out of a wrong motive. Mark 8, 34 tells us how important it is that we let God deliver us from selfishness. Jesus called to him the throng with his disciples. Get the picture. Jesus, standing maybe on a rock, preaching to people in a field. And he said, look, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, forget yourself, ignore yourself, disown yourself, lose sight of yourself and all of your own interests. Well, that doesn't sound like much fun, does it? And take up his cross and join me as a disciple and side with my party, following with me continually, cleaving steadfastly to me. Now, this scripture really messes with people's heads because it sounds so, like, not fun. Forget yourself, lose sight of yourself. But the point is, very simply, that if we will stop trying to take care of ourselves, then God will take care of us. And let me tell you that he will do a much better job than any one of us could ever do. God can get you more in a moment than you can get for yourself in a lifetime. God can give you more joy from the inside out than you could ever go by across the counter anywhere. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way unto him and he will bring it to pass. Why is it that when you have a problem a serious problem, or when I have a serious problem, that many times, even though I could go help somebody else with their problem, I can't help myself. Forget yourself. Stop trying to take care of yourself. Why don't you retire from self-care and throw a big retirement party? <laughs> now, I don't mean, don't take what I'm saying out of balance. I'm not saying don't take care of yourself. I'm not saying don't invest in yourself. I'm not saying don't do things for yourself. I'm saying don't be a selfish, self-centered person where everything in your life is all about you. And the way that you can judge that is by simply asking yourself, what am I doing that's making somebody else's life better? Well, if you've prayed in faith, trust that God hears you and believe that He is working. No matter what the situation looks like, or even what it feels like, always remember, God is working.